Hi, my name is Mathieu Bollard and I'm the owner of, and founder of NACI Biologie Medicale. NACI is a medical lab, a high-tech medical lab that is specialized in man fertility and the biology of spermatozoa. Today we're going to talk about the couple, uh, let's call them Bill and May for the sake of the video. So Bill was declared as ospermic by the fertility clinic, which means that they couldn't find any spermatozoa in his semen. So uh, the options that were proposed to uh, Bill and May were to uh, do uh, some sort of surgical uh, recovery of sperm directly from the reproductive tissues of Bill. But, so it means uh, epididymal aspiration or a testicular biopsy so they can find few spermatozoa to micro-inject in May's oocytes after she has been super-related. ICSI is a uh, kind of IVF. Uh, kind of in vitro fertilization where spermatozoa are actually aspirated one by one and micro injected one by one in, in the oocytes uh, to force fertilization. And um, it is a technique that is uh, often used when very few spermatozoa are available uh, for uh, in vitro fertilization. So this option was considered, and uh, the other option that was considered was also to use donor semen. So the plan basically for the fertility clinic is to synchronize the oocyte collection and the spermatozoa recovery from the biopsy on the same day. And if they cannot find any spermatozoa in uh, the biopsy, they ask the couple if they want to use donor semen to fertilize these oocytes that they've just been recovering from the, the superovulated women. So uh, when we uh, received uh, the sample from Bill, we decided to start by performing a fertility spermogram under the microscope. So this is the microscope where we perform the fertility spermograms at Nessie, the microscope that we use. This is some sort of a heating device that keeps the microscope slides warm as we analyze the sperm. We don't want them to stop moving because the slides are too cold, so we heat them. Uh, keep them warm. So unfortunately, we were not able to find any spermatozoa on our microscope, just like the fertility clinic. And this is where we decided to uh, turn around and use another technology. The technology that we decided to use was uh, the flow centimeter. So the flow centimeter is right here in front of you, and I'm showing you how we prepare the tubes. The tubes actually are like this one that you can see right here. Okay, it is loaded with a saline solution and also fluorescent dyes, fluorescent molecules that can get into the cell and help us reveal their presence. So the cells are aspirated right here by the probe that you can see. There's some kind of stainless probe inside the tube which you can visualize here. Then the cells enter this little cuvette right here that you see it is made of quartz and it is exposed to various laser beams that you can see right here. So once the cells get into the uh, cuvette right here <clears throat> and they hit the laser beam, the fluorescent dyes that are within the cells produce light in response to the laser beam. And then the light travels inside optic fibers that you can see right here at the back. And they are, and this light is collected by photomultipliers, GMTs, that are inside the photocentimeter at the back. So the light is collected and it is also uh, uh, digitalized and sent to the first computer that's at the back, but below this little um, bolt right there, and then sent to a second computer that's on the side right here. So when we processed Bill's sample in, with this technology, what we saw is actually that Bill's sample was containing spermatozoa. You can see them here as little spikes on the graph. On the left side, you see spermatozoa that actually were dead, and the right side population right here are actually spermatozoa that were alive. Okay, so no different story from this analysis. So we got back to the microscope and started analyzing more and more semen using several tens of microscope slides to finally end up finding this guy right here. Okay, uh, motile spermatozoa under the microscope. So it showed us that the flow centimeter was telling the truth. There were living spermatozoa in this sample. So long story short, it took us about 45 minutes to find 
uh, Motal spermatozoa under the microscope in the sample after we've been confirming that they were there using the flow centimeter. The cool thing about this story is that after we've been uh, generating these data, we sent the report to the fertility clinic and they undertook the challenge of trying to make ICSI uh, from uh, a semen sample from Bill. And they succeeded actually. They found motile spermatozoa in the sample that they've obtained from Bill after this test that we've done. They uh, fertilized uh, some oocytes uh, collected from May um, after she had been super ovulated. They used the XC, they fertilized the oocytes, they succeeded at generating embryos, they transferred these embryos, May became pregnant, and the little baby boy was born last October, October 2015, so three months ago. So this is a very good story. Uh, no testicular surgery involved, no donor semen involved. Uh, the parents of the child are biological parents of the child. Uh, so it was a good success story. I was very impressed by the ability of the fertility clinic at generating this uh, pregnancy because working with so few spermatozoids well is a very tough job. And um, yeah, uh, thumbs up to them. So the reason why I'm telling you this little story, the reason why we're making this little movie, is uh, so you know that uh, if you've been declared as ospermic, you might not be as ospermic. And uh, the second thing that I want to say is that if you happen to be in the same situation as Bill, fertility clinics are out there. That, uh, there are fertility clinics out there that can help you uh, solve the problem. Um, I want to put my foot on the brake pedal, though, here, just to make you realize that most probably most men who were declared azoospermic by fertility clinics really are azoospermic. Okay, I'm not trying to sell the moon here, um, but I think it's worth checking. We don't have numbers uh, yet. The technology is so new that uh, powerful statistics haven't been done. We, so we, we don't know how many, uh, what is the proportion of azoospermic men who are actually not azoospermic. Uh, but as I said, I, I think it is worth checking. So if it is your wish, you can give us a phone call. The phone number will be written at the end of the video and the uh, address of the website as well. If you're a doctor and you're interested in understanding better what we do, you can uh, give us a phone call as well. Uh, we, we like to discuss with practitioners. Uh, practitioners we, uh, we like to be challenged. We like to explain what we do. Uh, we're true scientists and uh, it, it is always very interesting for us to better understand uh, how this tool can improve your practice, how it can, uh, what kind of problems it creates. Of course, sometimes we don't see uh, everything because we're not in your shoes. Uh, so discussing about it is most of the time the best solution. So give us a phone call. Uh, we'll be there. Um, this is all for now. Uh, you can uh, take the time to uh, like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter. Every time we do these little videos, we share them uh, through the social medias. Thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you for your attention. Bye. Till next time.